Are uh, we? It's excellent, man, again. New Muties 44. This is another issue about Legend. That is him there. Legend. Daniel Stevens. Uh, this, though, this is a different character. This is Wolf Girl. She is not Daniel Stevens. And this cover is by Alan Windsor Smithy. And it is crap, but it's okay because the interior art is amazing. This is done by Butcher Jackson. And he even draws Boring Myra MacDonald looking quite fresh. I do wonder though, I wonder which of her exciting 10 different lives this one is meant to be. I'm going to say the only one. Her one and only life because that shit should not be considered fucking canon. This is Christopher Caravoyant writing again. And to prove that point, we start off and there is conveniently a fallen bit of ceiling for no reason. And it's going to squash Bor and Myra. And Wolf Girl, she jumps in and tries to save her. But oh no, she's going to get squashed too. So Daniel Stevens, in a moment of panic, he lets his evil alternate personality take over so that he can use their telekinetic powers to stop the roof from crushing the ladies. So Legend, who has been pushed to the background for 20 or so issues, one day he is just back in the book and his bad personality takes over straight away. And he's a villain again and they've all got to stop him and his evil schizophrenia and his evil mental health. Tell you what though, if Jonathan Huckleberry, if he came out and said that all of Bor and Myra's ten brilliant lives, if they all ended with her fallen victim to random poor craftsmanship, I'd have a lot more patience for that idea. At least you could say it would be referring to this issue and some actual character backstory. And there is some Mary Sue Moonchild softcore porn for ya. If I didn't hear her character and her existence, this would probably be pretty nice. Of course, she has got any power she needs, so she senses what has happened elsewhere with Legend. Uh, we've got some really good art by Butcher Jackson. Uh, he is one of them artists like Jason Byrne or Mark Stanley Lee or Junior Junior who really helped make Christopher Claravoyant comics somewhat appealing. Then we have got a big image of Magic Girl because Christopher Claravoyant, he, he doesn't even try to hide the fact that his books, they're just about the overpowered female characters that he likes to masturbate to. Like up here, Mary Sue Moonchild, at the top of this page, she says, You guys go back to bed. I will handle this on my own. And that there, that is the story that Christopher Caravoyant actually wants to tell here. But regardless, we do have all the team together for this one. Uh, sadly, well this image is nice, but I'd like something a bit better showing all the characters clearly. Uh, best we've got is down here, this little panel. Not worth seeing who is who because Mary Sue Moonchild and Magic Girl, uh, they are the only important ones in any Christopher Caravoyant New Muty stories. Uh, the team, they regroup and meet up with Wolf Girl, so there's like eight or so excellent men here and the majority of them are struggling for stage time because Christopher Caravoyant he's just playing favourites as he always does and this bit is fucking infuriating Wolf Girl and the annoying robot they both say that they can use their mutie powers to track down legend but Mary Sue Moonchild tells them not to and that she'll just use her powers to track him down instead uh, I also want to talk about how badly handled Legends is. All my points about the initial story are in those videos, but another thing I didn't like is that 
They introduced this character, this very powerful character who has a huge connection to the Excellent Men franchise. He is Dr. X's son. And then he was just shuffled off into the background. His only appearance between that first story and this one is that little cameo with no dialogue in Secret Wilds I I. There's been no continuing subplot or ongoing character arc with legend. He has not been referred to or even mentioned since. The character, he was just ignored until this issue about two years later, where he's just back to being a villain for a single issue. And then Dr. X, over in Uncanny Excellent Men, like... Four issues after finding out that he has got a son, he fucks off to go and live in outer space without even considering that he now has an estranged son who needs him. Uh, and here, Mary Sue Moonchild, she explains who Legend is to the rest of the team. And again, this is evidence of how poorly conceived this idea was. Something as monumental as Dr. X having a son... You'd think that these characters, the ones who were there for that story, they would definitely have told the others about this enormous bombshell. The teenagers, of, of course they would gossip about something like that, but it's just an afterthought. It was never about giving Dr. X a child. It was about having Mary Sue Moonchild beat the most powerful telepath's more powerful son. Uh, that is a little trick Christopher Claravoyant always uses. Marvel, they'll say no to him having something like Fenix beat Silver Surfman. So instead, he has Fenix beat Firestorm. So he's still implying that Fenix can beat Silver Surfman. So Legend, he's in a pub and he's having some bar fights and he quickly defeats most of these excellent men for the obvious reason that Christopher Claravoyant He's only really interested in about two of them. Uh, another stupid thing is Legend. They tie his hair back for this story, so it doesn't even look like him. Why do that? His mad hair is like one of the visual identifiers about his character. I mean, that, that's what they have on the cover. Not, not him with his hair tied back, is it? Uh, then there's this really clunky bit of subplot here. Like, it's just one page... During all this, Wolf Girl's dad, the Reverend Father Bishop, he randomly shows up and calls Wolf Girl an abomination. Uh, then we're back to our regularly scheduled programming. Because it's a Christopher Claravoyant book, it's one of his pet female characters who defeats Legend with relative ease. Uh, Magic Girl... She doesn't even really day out. She just threatens him and it's over. And the story ends. Selfishly, focusing on how much this experience affected Christopher Claravoyant's Mary Sue's. With very little sympathy or emphasis on Daniel Stevens or his mental health. Sometimes Christopher Claravoyant, he can do passable stuff. When it's a simple superhero idea and he's joined with a good artist. But this proves that even with those things, he still can find ways to fail. I do like the art, but I didn't recommend this. It's getting seven thumbs up.